I wanted to speak to you about something. The scripture talks about the day dawning and the morning star arising in your hearts. And I feel like I'm at that point with this particular topic. The day is dawning and I, I know that there is far more than what I have seen and I'm desiring that the Lord show me more of this, but I want to share with you what I have seen so far. And the topic that I've chosen this morning is the the blessings of being called by God. And John wrote in 1 John 3, 1, he said, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. How is this? What manner? What is the manner of love that has been bestowed upon us? And how can we be called the sons of God? Charles Wesley posed this very question in his very famous hymn, And Can It Be? And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? And our Lord has answered this question very clearly, at least to those who can see it and believe. He said, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. Again, Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Just in these few passages, Jesus makes it very clear. He is the one that makes himself known. There is not a single soul that will know the Father or the Son unless they are revealed by themselves to that soul. And the only way we have an inheritance is because we have been called. And unless God calls you, you cannot come. Amen. But when he reveals himself, the appeal goes out. Later on in that, that latter verse I just read in Matthew, Jesus, in his very, very way that he does this, his very tender way, but yet powerful way, he says this, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Mm -hmm. So, brethren, if you will allow for me just for a minute to ask you a very personal question, one that must be answered honestly, have you heard him call you? Amen. Has he called you? Do you remember what it was like when the Father said, Come? He said, Come unto you, and I will give you rest. When you heed that calling of God and come to him, the burden all of a sudden becomes light, and the labor is far more pleasant. There is work to be done, but it's doable, and it's pleasant. Amen. So if you take some time to ponder who has done the calling, who has called you, and the implications of being called, it is quite staggering. <clears throat> So I wanted to consider some things this morning. What are some of the blessings of being called by God? We've been made joint heirs together with Christ. We've been justified, glorified, and sanctified. We've been made righteous. There are three particular things I wanted to take a look at. One of them is found in 2 Peter 1.4. And Peter wrote this, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. <clears throat> Everyone is partaking of something. Everyone. Every single person that has ever walked, they, they partook or are partaking of something. We are told that we were sometimes in, sometimes in darkness, but now we are in the light. We are in light, in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Being partakers of the divine nature means our nature is of God. We are begotten Amen. of him. Uh -huh. We are no longer children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Just as our children bear our nature, they look like us. 
When they get older, they talk like us and they react like we do. We bear the same nature. We are partakers of the divine nature. <clears throat> we respond as God responds. We think as he thinks. Amen. We desire the same things yes. that he desires. We long for the same thing that he longs for. Amen. We see things the way he sees them because we are partakers of the divine nature. And brethren, this would not have happened if he had not called us. If he had not called us, we would not be partakers of the divine nature. So this is not theoretical. This is not, well, we hope so, or maybe we're partakers. We are partakers of the divine nature. And I was considering um, an example that you could look into scripture. And I was thinking um, on the way to the meeting this morning, this came to me about Lazarus. Now, Lazarus was in a nature. He was dead. There was nothing alive about him. There was nothing that would enable him to take off the grave clothes and to come out of the grave. He had a certain nature. He was residing in death. But the one who gives life called him. He said, Lazarus, come forth. And the only thing that Lazarus could do was come forth. And God or Jesus called him out of there. We were dead in our trespasses and sin, but Christ died for us. And he called us and made us partakers of the divine nature. And we escaped the corruption. Lazarus escaped the corruption for a while. He did have to return, but he escaped it for a while. The second thing is there is one body, one spirit, even as you are called, and one hope of your calling. So being many, are one, we are one body in Christ, and every one members of another. So this, this is the second part I want to focus on. We are one body. Being called of God makes us one body. And if you consider this marvelous being that God is creating, he is calling an innumerable company together to produce one body. And he's accomplishing, he, he is accomplishing this work through Christ and the cross. This means that when you are called of God, he places you in his body where he sees fit. He gifts you in particular areas that you will benefit the body. Now, our earthly, earthly body resemble, resembles this to some degree. But there are times when our earthen vessel will revolt against other parts of our body, causing discomfort or hindrances or sicknesses, these sorts of things. But the body of God is not dysfunctional. It is not this way. <clears throat> the, body of God, uh, the body that God has placed us in, in Christ, is one that perfectly functions and labors together for a purposed end to be a habitation for God. This is the function of the body, the ultimate culmination at the end. We will be a habitation for our Lord. So imagine what it would be like for God to have given the commission for his habitation, but said it must be done alone. You would, each individual person would have to fulfill every single part of the function of the body by themselves alone. But the Lord did not do it this way. He designed for us to help one another and to come together and to labor together one another, with one another. This is a fruit of being called by God. And so this habitation is so enormous that it requires many members. And we have been called by God to this body. And thirdly, those who are called of God are in a forward posture always about the father's business. This is what our Lord said. He was always doing those things which he saw his father do. He's always about his father's business. Always striving, always pressing. But for what? What is there that is so valuable that through the ages men have laid down their lives for this? For this? What is there? What is it that they're looking for? Paul wrote, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. God is calling us to where he is. He will not stoop to where we are. He is calling us with a high calling. And we have a high calling. 
We have come to a mountain that cannot be touched with hands, but is one that is eternal in the heavens where God is. Paul used a very strong word in this passage. He used the word press, and that caught my attention. What does it mean to press? We're pressing toward the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And I was reminded of a race. If you've ever watched people run track, and they're, they're right next to each other, and right at the very end, the, the winner presses. He presses toward that mark so that he can overcome. And I was thinking just not too long ago, we had the Summer Olympics. And um, I love swimming because I used to be a swimmer in high school. And so I enjoy watching these professionals swim. And um, one of our swimmers, one of the, the men, he was swimming. And he won the race by one one hundredth of a second. And he pressed towards. And what he did is he chose not to take that last breath, but he pressed toward the wall so that he could obtain the gold medal. He pressed toward the mark for what his prize was, which, which was a gold medal. But we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling. We do. We give it everything that we have in order to obtain that. Another way to say it is that God is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him, those who are diligently looking after him. They seek every opportunity to obtain what he has for them. But you could not do this if you had not been called by God. He is the one that calls us, and he is the one that enables us Uh to see the prize and to press forward to it. So, brethren, it's been said before that we are in a battle. Sometimes the battle may seem a little bit more fierce than other times, but we are in a battle that we have been called to, and we are in a battle that if we stay in it and press, we are guaranteed a victory. We have been saved and called with a holy calling, not by our own works, but by God's purpose and grace. The calling is holy because our God is holy, and he is the one that has called us. So what can we say to these things? Give diligence, brethren, to make your calling and election sure. The Lord has laid a solid foundation. He has placed the cornerstone. He has laid this foundation, and it cannot be moved. And we ourselves have been placed on that foundation. We have been taken out of the miry muck and mire of sin and death, and he has placed us on a firm foundation. So as we come and gather around again this morning, let us come up higher and gather the heavenly materials that have been provided by our Lord to build upon this foundation. Amen. Brethren, you have been called of God. Amen. Amen.